Hello all you teachers out there, this is Elaine for Bunny Tales, and today we're going to look at how to use Class Dojo. Class Dojo is a great tool for class management and record keeping. Now to get started, we need to go to classdojo.com. Once you're in classdojo.com, you need to create an account. To create an account, you need to go to the upper right corner and sign up. When you sign up, you need to choose which category you're signing up for. Today we're going to sign up as teachers. You're going to create your account by filling in your basic information, first name, last name, email, and then create a password. I already have an account, so I'm going to go ahead and log in onto my account. And I will meet you at the front page. Once you've logged in, you're going to find yourself at the main page. The first thing you can do once you've logged in is create your class. To create your class, you're going to click on this plus button here that says New Class. I am going to name my class Bunny. And then you can choose your grade level. I've got a second grade class here, and now I'm going to click Create. Once you've created your class, you can start by adding your students. Click on this button that says Add Students, and then you can either add them in one by one by putting their first and last name, or you can copy and paste a student list from Excel or Word. I'm going to import a student list from Word. I'm going to go to my Word file, Student List, and I'm going to grab my students from here, and I will just Paste it on to here. Import list. Now, if I have them in the reverse order where I've got the last name first, I can just flip it by clicking on this button here. But over here, I'm okay. I have them first, then last name. So I'm going to click on continue. And I'm going to save. Now, once you've saved your class, all of the students are going to appear on your list as eggs. To have those eggs hatch, you have to have the parents and the students log in. How can we get our parents to log in? We can get invites. So you click on this button over here and you have several ways to invite the parents. You can either invite them by sending them an email. Each student's name is over here. You can write the parents email and then send an invite. Or if you want to send it in a paper, which the students can refer to later on, you can go to download printouts. Now, the fun thing about this is you can do this in more than one language. So if you are teaching in a school overseas, say you're teaching in China or you're teaching in the, the, the United Arab Emirates, that's where I'm teaching, you can choose the language over here. You can choose Arabic, you can choose any language you want to, you can choose French, you can choose Chinese, you can choose Spanish. All right, I'm going to go ahead and choose English. And I want to send it to all parents. I can click on the download printouts. Over here, I have the printouts downloaded. Each parent will get a letter with the instructions on how to log into their account. So each student has an individual letter. You've got the student's name on top, and then you've got the teacher's name, and then you have the methods to log into Class Dojo. They have their individual passwords. So you can mail these off to your parents. Now back to Class Dojo. Okay, once you've sent out the invites, you can go ahead and start setting up your class. Now, to, in order for this class to uh, get started, the students need to log in. Since this is a demo class, I'm going to go to another class where the students have already logged in and hatched their eggs. All right, so I have a class over here. I have my students. Now, 
The fun part about this is you can personalize your students' avatars. Now, if you have a student whose avatar doesn't really match their personality, you can change their avatar by going to that student. So over here, I have Adam. Adam is a very serious student. So his avatar over here doesn't really reflect him. So I'm going to go click on the avatar's picture. I'm going to look for someone who looks a little bit more like Adam's personality. Let's see. Um, okay, here. Now this looks more like Adam. So I'm going to choose this picture and then I am done. If you do not like any of the avatars, you can always choose different options. They have critters. They have seasonal themed um, avatars. So over here, you've got Valentine's theme. You've got little hearts and everything. I'm going to stay with this one over here. Done. And save it. Now you can customize all of your students if you want to. Or you can even have the students come up to your desk and help pick their avatar, the one that they feel more comfortable with or that they feel reflects them. I use this for many different reasons in my class. One of the reasons I use it is to give the students positive reinforcement when I catch them doing something good. So if I catch Helen doing something good, I will give her a positive reinforcement point. So Helen has been working hard all day, so I'm going to give her a working hard point. And there she goes. Now, sometimes you want to add a certain skill that your class is working on. It might not be up there on the list. You can customize your list. So I just caught Tela doing something we've been working on. We have been trying to get the class to help each other, be more helpful, and that's the skill we're working on. So I can add that skill. I click on the add skill, and then I'm going to add it. Helping. A friend and I can change the icon for that helping a friend this looks like a helpful one over here and I'm going to give this three points because it's very important so I can save that and now that will show anytime I want to give a positive reinforcement point. I've got that. You can add as many skills or, or as many points as you want to. So now I'm going to give Tala a helping a friend. Now she's got three points. One of the fun features of Class Dojo is that you can group your students. So in my class, I have my students sitting in groups of four. So I'm going to collect group, and I'm going to have my students grouped in the same groups that they're sitting in. Add a group. My first group, I've got Adam, Mary, Senad, and Helen, and that group is called the Lions. So I'm going to put Lions over here, create a group. Now I have all four in the one group. I'm going to go ahead and create groups for the rest. I've got Mira. Sarah, Kim, and Omar, and they are the cats. I'm going to create this group. Create one last group. Tala, Lara, Sam, and Toby. And they are the tigers. And I'm going to create this group, and now I have my class divided into groups of four. This is great for when you want to assign your groups individual tasks, which I will show you how to do later on. It is also good for when the whole group is caught doing something good together and you want to award the whole group a positive reinforcement point. So over here, let's say I caught the lions doing something good. So I'm going to award them a point for cleaning up their table. There we go. Everybody in the lion group got that point. So if you go back into individual students, you'll see that everybody that was in that group has gotten a positive reinforcement point. Now, Class Dojo does give the teacher the chance to give a student a negative point. If you catch someone doing something that you want them to stop, you can give them a negative point. 
I personally do not use that in my class because when a student sees that they are in the red, it's kind of discouraging, but that is an option offered in Class Dojo. So if Sam was doing something that he needs to work on, you go to needs work and you can say Sam is off task, give him a negative point, and then he's got a minus one point. Now, I personally don't like that, so I'm going to give him a positive point and erase that negative. Now, this is great to keep records. It also helps encourage students to take an active part in being a class member, in following the rules. It really helps with class management. But that's not all Class Dojo does. It has so many tools in it. You ask a question and you don't know which student to choose. You can go to this button down here, random, and it will choose a student and then that student can answer a question or do a task. Or And once they get that task done, they can get a point. Um, another tool that you have is you can set up a timer. You want the students to do something, you set up the timer, give them a five minutes start, and it will show the students exactly how much time they have to do a certain task. There are some other tools over here. Music. So if you're doing a writing assignment and you want to have some focus music played on the background, you can go to music and the students can listen while they are working. You can change the song by clicking these buttons on the side. These are some of the tools that you have on Class Dojo. There are some other tools you can play around with, but I want to jump into some of our other features. Class Dojo is also very good for record keeping. So one of the tools that I like to use is this tool over here. So you go over here to Options, and you can go here to View Reports. And once you're at View Report, you can see how the class has been acting throughout that day. So you can see in general what all of the students have been doing. Who's been on task, who's followed instructions, and then you can go to view spreadsheet and then it will have that report for you on Excel so that I can print this out and keep it as a record. You'll get the spreadsheet in Excel form, and you can use this to track the student's attendance. You can see how many days they've been present. You can see how many days they've been late. This is just a demo class, so you've got one, but it will count up to as many days as you want to, and you can have it reset each month. You can see what the students need to work on, what task they need to work on. This is a great tool that I use all the time. Uh, on a weekly basis, I print out the report, keep it in my file. That way I know what student needs to work on what skill and it just helps me stay organized. It's also great for attendance. You can check your attendance throughout the whole week and it just really helps keep everything recorded and everything documented. So another great tool on Class Dojo is the portfolios. A portfolio is a great way to keep the students' work organized and it's also a great way to give them tasks. So I'm going to create a task for my students. This week we're working on pets. So this week we're learning about pets. So my title is pets and my task is I draw a picture of an animal that you would like to have as a pet. So I have given them a task. How do I want them to respond? You can choose if you have a question where you want them to actually uh, write something, you can ask them to write a text. You can ask them to submit a video, a photo of something. Today I want them to draw, so I want the response to be a drawing. And then I can assign it. I can assign it to the whole class. 
If I click this button, I will assign it to the whole class, or I can assign it to a specific group. So if I want a specific group, I can say I want to assign this to Adam and Helen and Kim. Okay, so if students have been selected, I click on Assign to Students. And now these students know that they have to complete this task. When the students complete the task, this bar here will show me which students have completed the task. After the students have completed the task, I can go to each student's name and I will be able to see all the assignments they have turned in. Since this is a demo class, I don't have any of the work here, but if you were to open my class from school, you will find that each student has a bunch of assignments that they have turned in. This is a great way to have all the kids work in one place and you're not looking for them in different parts. Everything is set in one specific area. It's great for record keeping. Another great tool in Class Dojo is a class story. The class story button up here is where you can post information about what's going on in your class. So uh, I post on a daily basis. I tell the parents a little bit about what's going on in our class. Over here you can write what's going on in your class. So this week we were learning about farm animals, so I'm just going to write about what we did in our class. And then I can add some pictures. I usually put pictures of my students. So over here I'm going to just drop a picture from a file I have. And then I will upload it and post it so that the parents can see what's going on in our class. Parents can go down and see what we've been learning about. Another great feature on our class story is the events button. So if you have an event coming up, you can write about it over here. We have a field trip, so I'm going to write about that to remind our parents. Trip to the farm. Here's our title. We're going to have the trip on the 27th, so I'm going to write down the date. If I have a specific time for the trip, I will put it over here. Our trip is going to be an all-day trip, so I can just mark all day on the 27th. Uh, if I have instructions, I can type them in over here, bring a snack, whatever I need to let the parents know. I can also change the theme here so when the students look at it, they know what they're, what they're going to do and it gets them all excited. So I'm going to pick a, an animal theme because we are going to a farm, so I'll pick a horse and change the background. Uh, let's put a green background over here. And I will post this for the students and the parents to know what events are going to come up this week. I can also set a reminder so the, the, the students and the parents will know what's coming up and they can remember to prepare themselves. So I'm going to set it five days before and one day before. That's it. And then I can create that post. And it shows up over here, upcoming events. Over here, the parents can see what events are coming up in the class. They just go over here and upcoming events, and they'll know exactly what to expect this week. So this is definitely a great tool that the students and the parents really enjoy. Another great tool is the messages. The messages over here is a good way to communicate with the parents. You can send direct messages to each parent. Uh, this is a demo class, so I don't have parents connected. But if the parents are connected, you can select their name and send them a direct message. And they can message you. Parents can stay in touch, and they know what's going on in the class. And I know what the parents have to tell me. Class Dojo has so many tools that you can use. These are just some of the tools that I use on a daily basis in my class. If you have any questions about Class Dojo, please send them to me in the comments below. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching Bunny Tales. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.